Welcome to the Knife Junkie Podcast, your weekly dose of knife news and information about knives and knife collecting. Here's your host, Bob the Knife Junkie DeMarco. Welcome to the Knife Junkie Podcast. I'm your host, Bob DeMarco, and on this edition of the podcast, I'm speaking with Dirk Werning. Dirk is a fellow YouTuber and uh, uh, a guy that I first first uh, started watching who's who really came on strong on my radar when I was getting into some really beefy, big uh, lockback, uh, not lockback, but uh, locking folders. Uh, his taste is uh, is impeccable, and his reviews are detailed, and uh, every day a new one is coming out, and I, I really resonate with his take on a lot of knives, and we'll be talking all about that. Uh, you might know Dirk. He's appeared on Thursday Night Knives a few times, and uh, it's always great to talk to him, but I wanted to dig down deep and find out uh, what, what makes the man tick. So we are going to get to that in just a minute. Uh, please uh, check out uh, the other YouTube videos. I do uh, I do some knife reviews and some uh, uh, my own hot takes on certain knives. So check those out and uh, be sure to subscribe uh, right here on YouTube. Without further delay, I bring you Dirk Warning. Do you like the sound of the alphanumeric combinations M390, 204P, and 20CV, but bristle at 8CR13MOV and AUS-8? You are a knife junkie. Probably worse. Dirk Werning, how are you, sir? Good. How are you? I'm doing well. Thanks for coming on the show. I appreciate it. Hey, thanks for having me. All right. So as I always like to do uh, when I start off a podcast with a with a fellow a knife junkie and YouTuber, I, I have to ask what you've been carrying in your pocket today. Today, I started out with a, a Big Knives Field Marshal, Steelcraft Field Marshal. And then in the afternoon, I kind of change it up. You know, come on, we're knife guys. I had the uh, Hellraiser P series from Red Horse Knife Works. P series uh, meaning production. Yep, it's their production. Uh, uh, let me see that uh, Todd Bag Fieldcraft. Uh, oh, geez, uh, that one's on the other table. That's all right. That's all right. That is a uh, that is a quite a knife. Uh, it's a four inch bladed knife, I yep. believe. It's got the uh, a really curvy. Um, beautiful, beautiful knife. I today was carrying, uh, the knife I've been carrying quite a bit, uh, lately, my, my, uh, Jason Knight Kukri. Yep. The, uh, MK Ultra made by Fox Knives. You just put out a great review of that knife, uh, two days ago, I think yesterday as yeah, we record was, this. Yep. I think it was yesterday and I blame you because <laughs> you had talked so highly about it on a Thursday night knives last week two weeks ago i don't know a couple weeks back and so i just went the next day and ordered the folding version all in black as well as the uh fixed blade oh nice so i got it in all black and the fixed blade i have here also oh god that's such a beauty are you a fan of uh jason knight's work i am absolutely uh, so it was a quick and easy sell, really. I mean, nobody had to twist my arm too much. <laughs> yeah, he's. Uh, I, I love his brand of Kukri slash Bowie kind of just uh, amazing curvy sword. So, uh, so one of the first things I ever asked you or talked to you about was in your videos, in your knife review videos, you always have a coin that says uh, rule number nine. And I was like, what, what is rule number nine? <laughs> <laughs> so what is rule number nine? And and tell me how you got into this whole thing. Uh, the rule number nine is uh, always carry a knife with you, basically. Uh, and it came from the TV show NCIS. So it's one of Gibbs's rules. Gibbs has is one of the main characters of the show. He's got, I don't know, I think there's 27 different rules. And one of them is always have a knife. And then don't ever apologize, never believe in coincidence. There's a whole bunch of different ones. Um, and that one just resonated with me since I've been carrying a knife basically daily since the late 80s, give or take, when I got my first Spider Co. Um, I mean, I had knives as a kid in, you know, Boy Scouts and Cub Scouts, you know, growing up, mm -hmm. I had the Buck 110 and, the, you know, the Boy Scout charade or whatever it was back then. Uh, but yeah, the first real knife was, well, real knife to me at that point was the Spider Co. police model. 
Oh, yes. Yes. I remember uh, the first time I saw the Spyderco police model. It was in a bike shop in Philly, and it was a guy behind the counter had <laughs> one, and he pulled it out. And, and, you know, it was big and, you know, over four inches and serrated. And he sliced open some box with inner tubes or something, put it back. I was like, whoa. And he did that all with one hand. That's amazing. <laughs> right. Yeah, I had seen him in a magazine, I think, you know, like Blade Illustrated or something way back as a kid. And uh, so then I was at a small knife store in San Francisco, Pier 39, called uh, Weeby Knives little tiny hole in the wall it seems so much bigger back then i've been back since now uh, because i live in napa which is about an hour outside of san francisco so i am in san francisco quite a bit and so i stopped in and back in the 80s and they had one as a left-handed because back then it was left or right it was not an interchangeable clip so they had to order me a right-handed one i waited about six months <laughs> went up, went back up to San Francisco to pick it up, and it was fully serrated, all stainless steel, and I carried that thing for years and years. Hadn't even gotten really into knives. That was just it. That was the one knife. So, so what, well, what was it about your childhood that uh, that um, led you to, I mean, because me too, but I didn't grow up in any sort of, uh, you know, as a kid, I wasn't really in the scouts. I didn't do much with knives when I was a kid, except collect them and 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 that kind of thing but at a certain point i realized oh no you should always have one on you mm -hmm. what was it uh why why did you always feel like you should have one on you you know back then in the 80s it was just you know i was working at the time in fast food always opening boxes things like that uh so it was there was always a knife around and i had to, i didn't like having to go and grab one so I needed one. So I just picked up my own and carried that all the time. Um, and it was really, I guess, you know, I think first blood where you really got into the movie, the end yeah. of the knives, right? I mean, that that did it for me. I think I watched first blood for the first time about 12 times one night. I just kept rewinding the videotape. The scene against the train. It again. And uh, fell in love with knives at that point when that movie kind of not first came out because I was a little young and going to the theaters, but a couple of years after that came out, it just became ingrained. So yeah, yeah, the holy trinity of of Rambo, Commando, and Predator for me, those were yes. the three movies. I was like, oh my gosh. <laughs> yes, exactly. everyone, needs to, you know, it would be a perfect world if we all walked around with those on our on our hips. So you carried the Spider Co police serrated stainless steel model for years and years and years. And then yep. there, there comes a point, you know, there, there is a point. It's like that moment you forget the last lyric of that song and then it's gone. Well, that happens in reverse. There's a point where you're just carrying a knife because you work at fast food restaurants. Then there's a moment where I'm going to get another knife and it's going to be better. How did that come about? Man, I'm not even a hundred percent sure. I think, I mean, I had stopped working at fast food I was into my more career at that point uh, and I started watching YouTube and saw knife reviews. I just kind of stumbled along across it, I think. And it went down the rabbit hole pretty quick. And that started about four years ago now, I think is when I really got into knives. Um, and a lot of it I blame Jim Skelton for. Oh yeah. I, I, I think I watched all of his videos at least twice and uh, there were a couple the hellraiser for one i literally paused his video clicked over on my phone to another website bought it and then went back and finished watching his video yeah he i, I had that <laughs> experience with him once with the riot when he first uh but uh, talked about the riot horizon b okay and he was like this is a custom knife for a production cost, like you are a fool if you don't, you know, turn off my video right now. I was like, well, I don't want to be a fool. And I ordered it and it exactly. was. Yep. You know, I think I bought three or four knives that way. That This one, um, the CKF Custom Knife Factory Muscle was mm -hmm. another one. Um, I don't remember the other ones, but those are the two that come to mind from watching Jim's videos. 
So you, your style of collecting, I'll, I'll let you define it, but I'll tell you when I first tuned into you, it was when I was getting into Medford's and you were maybe on the tail end of your Medford uh, mm -hmm. uh, collecting yep. at the time. And you had a lot of videos. You, you had amassed uh, uh, quite a bit of content on that subject. And, and that's how I've discovered most of my favorite YouTubers is really going down a rabbit hole about one um, knife maker or company or style of knife that someone else has has already gone down that and, and explored that territory. And so that's what you were for me with Medford. So, um, but the style of knife outside of, of that first brand that I came to you to, to find more about, you, you carry these big, giant, chunky knives. At least that's what you first started mm -hmm. showing off. Tell me about your your style and, and your wheelhouse, if you will. Yeah, you know, I was really deep into the Medford world at one point. <clears throat> I think I've got in my Medford playlist, there's probably 50-ish videos, um, maybe more, because I did compare. I did some comparison videos. I did reviews on about 45 or 50 different Medford models. Um, and most, all the Medfords in there are ones that I personally owned at the time. Mm -hmm. um, I've had a couple of loaned in, but for the most part, all of those are ones that I bought and owned myself. Because I, like I said, I went pretty far into that big overbuilt uh, world. My collection style has changed a little bit. I still have a few Medfords. I've sold a lot. Um, to buy other things, mm -hmm. as we often do. Um, but I still have some big chunky stuff. I mean, you've seen my tireware. Oh that yeah, I, that you I graciously loaned, you. loaned me that. So you know, again, not quite as big and beefy as a Medford. Well, it's it's bigger and beefier than some Medfords. Mm -hmm. um, so I still do have the bigger overbuild, but I also have kind of the more refined stuff as well, like Gahold Spectre. Oh yeah. Um, so it's, I can't really put my, I think it, I think Alex from Alex's Knife Box mm -hmm. kind of said it best one time when he was describing me, I think I had loaned him some knives for his channel and he was doing a review and he kind of said, hey guys, go check out Dirk. He's kind of a mix between Jim Skelton and Nick Shabazz. Now, I'm, I'm not <clears throat> as smart as either of those guys, number one, for the record. And I don't think I'll ever have the video production quality of Jim because he is over the top. But I think it kind of did sum it up for me when Alex had said that because Jim was into the big custom overbuilds and Nick is into a lot of the more production kind of budget-ish and I do, I have kind of a hodgepodge collection of everything from the donut knife that's just there. <laughs> I, I, I had to buy those. The dessert warrior. I got those in both sizes and I bought the Victorinox version. Um, and all the way up to, you know, custom one-off, you know, from Todd Fisher Sr. and Todd Fisher Jr. So I kind of play in the whole realm. So it's hard to say what my, my wheelhouse is just all the knives. And on my channel, I'm really trying to show all the knives. A lot of people I think kind of show this genre uh -huh. or yeah. that genre. I like to just show them all. I throw in some one-off customs and then some 30 or $40 you know, two sons and Kubis and whatnot. Yeah. But to me, it's just about experiencing all the knives. I think, I think most viewers appreciate that because, uh, because you might not be a custom guy uh, or mm -hmm. you might not be a production guy, uh, but to be exposed to both, I think is uh, important, especially if you're someone who like you wants to experience uh, the most, you know, out of this, hobby. It's funny because in the beginning you were very, I mean, you're uh, not to say, not to say that a Holt Spectre is necessarily more refined than a, um, a big brute ish knife. It's just, uh, except in its, except in all things, but it's design, um, wait, does right. that make sense? You know, you understand what I'm getting at. Mm -hmm. Uh, the big beefy knives like that giant cleavery knife by the British maker whose name I forget. Um, <laughs> 
I'm sure that is beautifully and impeccably made. <laughs> Though it might not be the most. I, I, I did. I did bring this one over. So this is the Peacemaker <laughs> by Phil Harvey in the UK. Uh, yeah, it's. Well, let's open it. it Come on, it's, man. It's crazy. I'm, I'm so kind of scared. If you, if you can't see this, it looks like a giant titanium and steel folding cleaver. I mean, literally giant. Which really is what it is. I mean, it's almost a five-something inch blade. The pocket clip alone, I think, is five inches. Wow. Which is longer than a lot of people's knives. Yeah. Um, and it's handmade one at a time by one guy in his in his that shop is- <laughs> in the backyard, basically. Wow. And when I first saw this online, somebody had posted, I had to have one. I just I fell in love with it. Um, and it took me a little while <clears throat> and then I reached out to Phil and he goes, yeah, you know, there's a lot of people ahead of you. I just I make only so many, blah, blah, blah. I said, well, let me know. And I think it was six months later. He hit me up. He goes, Hey, I'm just about to finish one. If you're interested, sign me up. So you have, you have that in your collection, obviously yep. probably your, your biggest knife. Probably your chunkiest. Yeah, that's uh, my biggest chunkiest knife that I own. Yes. So, um, but now your collection looks like what? I mean, initially it was lots and lots of uh, of Medfords and other things. Now you've got that, and you have everything down to the Civivi that you uh, that Asticus that you love so much. Is it is it like that or? Yeah, it pretty much runs the gamut. I mean, okay. one of my my favorite ones right now is a Kubi. Uh, I don't remember what the name or the number is of this one that a, it's a, cool blade. a viewer sent me, um, not only to check out, he, he kind of sent me some pictures, a friend of mine that helps me run a Facebook group. He goes, hey, check this out that I just bought. I'm like, dude, that looks pretty cool. I'll go check it out on Amazon in the morning. He goes, don't worry about it. I'm going to send you one. So he sent me this one to keep. And it's 30 something dollars, $31, $29. And dude, it is fantastic. I carry this a lot right now because it's 30 bucks. I can use it on anything. I could pry open my front door if I had to, and I wouldn't worry about it. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, so I've got the $30 knives all the way up to the, you know, the peacemaker and everything in between. So would the would the Dirk Werning of four years ago think that the Dirk Werning of today is slumming it by carrying a Kubi? No. Because I carried some stuff back then too that was kind of in that hundred dollar range, a couple hundred. I mean, I guess so, maybe. Because back then I was in that two to three hundred and up, mm-hmm. and now I'm in the thirty to multi thousands. Okay, I don't mean to be gauche and bring money into it, but but I I do like. I mean, that's okay. Uh, of the people I watch, that's what I really like to see. Like you mentioned, uh, Nick Shabazz before he. He covers such a wide gamut of knives, everything from you know a, a ten dollar what have you to a to a very very expensive custom knife, and and he puts them all through the same filter, and he looks at them all kind of in the same way, in accordance to what it is. Yes, um, absolutely. Uh, so when how how do you evaluate a knife, and what what uh, what are the criteria you put on judging a knife for your channel, whether or not you like it? Yeah, that's a great question. And having a lot of friends now send stuff in, I've been able to experience a lot more, right? When I first started my channel, I was just showing what I own, right? And I wasn't really, I I liked them all. So I think my reviews came out that way because, well, geez, I bought these over the last two years. I'm going to talk about them. Now, as people send stuff in, I'm getting to experience a lot more knives and there's knives that I would never have looked at before. I would never have looked at a Kubi. I just would never have thought of looking at it. And now, I'm why? Like, hey, I wouldn't have looked at it because it was thirty dollars. Okay. And I'm not trying to be, uh, you know, anything. I just That's what it is. Yeah. I, I would have been like, I'm not going to look at thirty, forty dollar knives. I'm in the two hundred and up. Not to be snobbish or anything, but that's just where I was at. Yeah, yeah. And um, now that I'm looking at $30 knives, quite a bit, there's a lot to them. 
So when anything comes in, I do, you know, I kind of just do an unboxing just to kind of, you know, hey, here's some more content. You guys, you know, here's what's coming on the channel in the near future, right? Um, and I get kind of a first impression. I don't really talk about the first impressions. I just kind of do an unboxing and say, yeah, here you go. Looks cool. And then off I go. And then I go home. And I go back out of my office and I go play with it. And I really look at the fit and finish. And I can kind of do, this similar to Nick, I'm sure, is I look at the fit and finish of the $30 knife in a $30 knife pair of glasses. Mm -hmm. So I can't really compare it to the fit and finish of the handmade Todd Fisher because it's going to be different no matter what, right? But for $30, $40, you can look at this and say, yeah, they did a great job or they did a crappy job. So for me, it's how does it feel in the hand? How does it feel in the pocket? Because let's face it, I sit behind a desk all day. Mm -hmm. This desk, this is my home office that I work from even before COVID and all that. I've been working from home for two plus years. It's what I do. Um, so it needs to be able to fit in the pocket well and be comfortable because I'm sitting at my desk all day. Uh, and it needs to, you know, function right. It can't really have lock stick, you know, all of the normal, hey, we want it to function properly. Um, and how does it feel in the hand? How is the fit and finish? How's the, the coating on the blades? Um, you know, is there geom the blade geometry? It does come into it a little bit, but not a ton for me, honestly. And I've gotten some criticism about, hey, how can you really review a knife if you've not gone out and used it? Because I'm going to comment on some on a video a while back that I got called out on by a friend of mine that said, dude, how can you do a review if you say you don't use it because it's not yours? It was loaned in. Well, because I've handled hundreds of knives, I can I, I, I know what I'm talking about. Yeah. You yeah. Know? And it's a two thousand dollar knife that a buddy lent me. I'm not going to go out and chop down a tree and, you know, break down this week's cardboard. You can evaluate every single thing about that knife except for how it goes through cardboard, yep. you know, and, and, and that's pretty much um, that's it. You know, uh, the, I, I approach it the same way. I mean, uh, I have a lot of knives that I've barely used or haven't used at all. And yep. it's not really necessarily about that. I have, I have my users and then I have my collection and, you know, sometimes they overlap, but uh, exactly. I, I think it is possible to review a knife without, without having to cut reams and reams of cardboard and all that. Um, you know, if you, if you have some idea of what you're talking about and again, cutting performance that, that, you know, that, that might be the one thing you were, the, yeah, please. just on that topic real quick. There are a lot of YouTube channels out there that that's all they do mm. is cutting performance. They'll bring a knife in, they'll sharpen it and they'll sit there for your 20 minute video and just chop rope. Yeah. Like Cedric and Ada, like he, Cedric, he and they'll chop up, you know, a pile of cardboard. That's all they're doing. So I don't need to do that on every knife. Those guys have already done it yep. for this knife and for that knife. And if I really, I mean, I guess I could pair up with one of them and link to a video of the AD20 that they did a cutting test on and say, hey, here's the AD20. If you want to see the cutting performance, check this link. You know what it is? Well, that might it, be a thing. It's the type of collector who watches. You know, it's like uh, uh, I watch a lot of videos where people use knives because that's kind of just fun to zone out and watch cardboard yeah. get cut. But for the kind of knife collector and user I am, that's just fun. That's not that does that's not giving me any useful information. I don't really need to know how a knife uh, goes through cardboard that much because I got plenty of knives to go through cardboard, and that's kind of a mundane task for me. Um, what what I need to know is how sweet it is. So I go to people who will show me how sweet it is. But but what I'm what I'm saying is, if you're someone who is cutting cardboard all day, yeah, that have at it. Um, mm -hmm. that's, that's the kind of channel you should be watching. Um, I think you should be watching all of them, as uh, as Alex recently stated. Um, but but you mentioned before um, that part of your process is the unboxing. Mm -hmm. I think you are the one person who has successfully navigated the, the the naming of a video so as not to spoil the unboxing part of it. 
I, I never talk about in the title or the thumbnail, I use the same exact thumbnail, what's in the box, and which is a thumbnail I made. I took a picture of a box I was opening and did it. Um, and I usually will say who it's from. Uh, and if it doesn't say who it's from, it's usually just something I bought. Mm -hmm. um, and then there you go. And, and I try to keep them super short. There's sometimes where I have some dealers, I've, I've built some relationships with some retailers that do send me large shipments. You know, hey, here's 12 knives, some ZT, some Spyderco, some, you know, all mixed up in the box, a couple of Fox knives. I've done some high-end Fox knives. Um, those unboxings become a little bit longer because mm -hmm. there's 12 knives. And those ones I'll usually take out of the box first and just lay on the table and then open them up for everybody to see. Um, but if I know it's one or two knives that, you know, Alex sent me or, you know, another YouTuber has sent me and I know there's two knives in there, I just cut it open, pull them out, look at them really quick, and then off you go. I try to keep it super quick and short. Two so minutes and you're done. Why do, why do you think unboxing videos are popular? And why do you do them? I originally wasn't going to do them because I thought they were kind of silly. I'm like, who's going to watch that kind of stuff? Then I saw a lot of people are watching them and they get a lot of views. So I'm like, all right, I'll do one. And it blew up. Everybody yeah. watched it. It's the vicarious thrill of like, oh, I didn't get a, uh, I didn't get a box today. Yeah. Yes. It's, sure it's, it's that. And it's a quick and short video. And I think that's kind of key too. I know for me personally, when I'm looking, scrolling on my phone to watch videos, it may be a cool title and a cool thumbnail. And I look over there and it's 27 minutes long. I'm like, I don't got time for that right now. I wanted to watch 10 minutes before I went to bed. So what I will often do myself is I'll start the video for a few seconds so that it goes into my history. So I can go back later to watch it. <laughs> yeah. Um, so I think the unboxings, because they're short and everybody knows my style anyway already, there are other people that do some unboxings that it's 12 and 15, 18 minutes. Okay. But I try to just open it up, show you what it is. Off I go. Two, three minutes. So I think people watch them because of that. It's the vicarious thing. Uh, and some people are, excuse me, probably looking to see what is coming next on this person's channel. Oh, yeah. Yeah, no doubt. That's the tease. That's the, uh, that's the, a lot of people do initial impressions. They get a couple of videos out of a knife. It's like, uh, it's like um, Nick Shabazz's disassembly videos, you know, not only are they extremely useful, but it's uh, doubling the content that comes from each knife. Um, yep. Plus and you I've, get done, I've done oh. a few dis disassembly videos. Um, and I, I look at Nick's a lot of times. If I'm not sure about something, I can't determine what something is on this knife. I'll go check him because he probably's taken it apart. Yes. Yeah. Then I can find out. Oh, it is nylon washers. That's what I thought, but I wasn't sure. Or, oh, dang, it's bearings. I could have swore it was whatever. So I, I use him for some research sometimes. Yeah. Well, so what what are your what are your uh, goals for your channel? Like uh, what do you want it to grow into? I would like it to grow. I'm at about 2,300 subscribers right now in just over a year. Uh, so I'm pretty excited about that, honestly. Uh, I want to keep it growing. Um, I would like to, I've spent some money here at the end of December and January kind of upgrading my setup to do a little bit higher quality, um, better lighting, better, you know, shot just straight down, moved in from my other room into this office. So just set up a better space to do it that I think is going to just bring more content or a higher quality content. Um, but yeah, really just kind of continue on what I'm doing. Maybe do some live streams. I've thought about that. Some people have asked if, if and when I'm going to do that. I'm not sure on that. I'm not sold on that yet. There's so many people doing live streams. Right now, it's hard to watch the live streams because yours is on and the other person starts and there's three going at the same time and I can only watch so much at once. There's a lot of overlap. I don't know about the live thing and I'd probably get all depressed because three people would join. And when, when you only get three views on a video, that's okay. <laughs> when it's three people live, you're kind of like, 
investing in 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 a big giant, you know, uh, oh, four stadium. billion. <laughs> Right. So I, I, that would probably be tough for me. I'd have to light up at least, you know, a dozen of my friends and make them commit to join. Yeah. Um, maybe some live streams. I definitely want to do some more um, collaborative things like this with you. Crash Knife Junkie, um, you know, Thursday Night Knives a couple more times. Alex and I are working on something together to do kind of a collaborative video maybe work with some other people I've talked to about doing kind of some collaborative videos also and kind of just grow into a little bit, you know, some different types of things. Try not to do the same boring, maybe to some tabletop reviews. Well, yeah. I mean, it's, it's like, it's, it's it, if you think of it as a channel, it's like any channel on TV, if we're going to look at it yep. in, in the old fashioned paradigm has a bunch of different shows and different yep. stuff. Specials. Oh, I'm going to try this a couple of times or once or, you know, we do our quarterly town hall. It's a fun thing that that comes up every once in a while, every, you know, absolutely. Or so, um, but one thing that I, I haven't seen much of on your channel, if at all, um, the two things, the first uh, slip joints, what's up with you in traditionals? Uh, is there any love? I there? think I've done, I'd have to go back and look, but I think there's been two slip joint videos. One was the Civivi fracture mm -hmm. that we in Civivi sent me and uh, a bunch of other people in a pass around group. And we all were supposed to do videos and release them on the same day, the day yeah. that the fracture went live for purchase. Mm -hmm. So I did that one. That was my first slip joint video. And then I got the hinderer slip joint loaned in. And when I opened the box, I was like, what the heck is this? I didn't even know. Maybe I'm the only guy. I didn't know Hinderer made a slip joint. Dirk. I, <laughs> slip joints aren't my thing. Um, so I think I have those two. And then traditional knives, I know those are big for you, the GECs and all of that. They just don't do anything for me. Okay, so we talked about me sending you some, and then I, and then uh, I think I kind and then, of... And then you kind of... You know, I, I you, call, you didn't write. You just kind of went dark for a bit. I, I and, you know, I'm okay. like, I can't put these in a box and send them across the country. <laughs> I need them <laughs> close. But I think maybe I've 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 crested my current uh, um, slip joint phase, and I think I'm I'm entering a, a different. Well, I know I have a number of different knives on their way, and I'm mm -hmm. I'm I'm on a different path right now. So I think I can I think I can stand to part with some of them, and maybe um maybe having them in hand. Uh, would would make a difference because they not because they are your type of knife, but because they would live up to the criteria you set up to judge the knives you do like. Yes, and and I'm not opposed to looking at them. Again, it kind of goes back to I want to review all the knives. I want to for my own personal edification. Mm -hmm. And because I think that's what the viewing public wants to see. And they can see it from a lot of different people. I mean, what is there, 300 hours of video uploaded to YouTube yeah. every minute? 500 hours. Of 500 hours? Every minute. So there's a lot of people doing a lot of content. Mm -hmm. So you can type in GEC123 and find a video. Yeah. Doesn't have to be mine. But there are some loyal followers. There's like three of them that watch all the videos so i'm very thankful for those three or four thanks guys <laughs> um you know and it's not just my brothers i mean <laughs> right. so um so yeah I'm, I'm i'm good with looking at traditionals and experience it because like i've said before i didn't think i would be into a 30 dollars kubi right but dude i've done a lot of kubis dave the uh this old sword blade oh, yeah. Uh, he has sent me a ton of Kubis and a ton of Tucsons over the course right. as loaners. And I still have a few more Kubis to review of his. Um, I think it's great. I love getting that stuff so that I can experience the stuff and really share it back out with the public. Those Tucsons are insane, aren't they? I mean, to me, they're this mysterious company that just slow drips out model mm -hmm. after model mm -hmm. after model. And they are... I've, I've only held for in hand um but i've uh you know i watch a lot of reviews they're amazing 
they're they uh it's it's interesting to me they're a little bit mysterious and and i know people have uh have given me the full uh the full picture of the mm -hmm. company but i prefer to think of them as just sort of mysterious another thing that we don't see much on your channel or that i'm i'm yeah what's the second thing it's mods how do you like here here i have this uh this XM18 that's been reground. I had this uh, scale made for it, um, which I thought was cool at the time. <laughs> and now it's now I'm I'm interested in maybe doing something else. Mm -hmm, but mm -hmm. uh, um, making knives your own. Now maybe it's a little bit different when you're coming from a custom uh, environment where the knife comes to you already your own because you've worked with a knife maker. But here's a production hinderer, um, which over time has uh, has you know become the cost of a custom knife just in the tweaks i've done to it right uh, but it is so thoroughly my own how do you feel about that where do you come down on modifications and and that kind of thing you know that again is a really great question that i've kind of asked myself over the year um because i'm a so i don't have any modded knives and i've not modded any knives Yet, my whole life prior, I have been making changes and modifications to every car I've owned, mm -hmm. every car, much to my ex-wife's dismay that, dude, you just, we just bought that from the dealer like a week ago. It's brand new. And you're already ordering stuff? Yes. I have to make it my own. Mm -hmm. I've built off-road vehicles. I'm part of an off-road racing team where we built race trucks and things, right? So I'm into modifying things. But somehow that doesn't equate into my knives and I don't get it. I, I, I can't, I don't have a good answer for that. Could I've it be, nothing. could it be that you just haven't, uh, you haven't released the, the dam and cause I, I didn't for a long time. And then, and then I think it started with ordering scales, my car to scales to mm. replace mm. carbon fiber or something like that. And I'm like, Hmm. Something about that is appealing, though. I think before I started doing that, it was kind of like, well, if you start doing that, then you're paying way more than you may as well get a custom knife. And um, yes and no, you're still yeah. going to be able to mod it much cheaper. You buy a the a, an XM18 for 400 bucks, let's say, and you spend 100 bucks on scales, you're 500. But to do a custom knife. No, well, depending. I mean, you can get some custom knives for 500. I did mm -hmm. a whole South African uh, playlist video about the custom knives out of South Africa that mostly Alex loaned me. And then another buddy of mine, Chris in Texas loaned me. And those are crazy insane knives in that five to 800 range, full custom, handmade, one by one, like crazy. Yeah. So you can do some custom stuff cheap, relatively cheap um or you can buy some custom stuff in the u.s for two three four five six eight you know keep going yeah uh thousands so i don't know i you know i don't know if i want to open that gate because <laughs> i have this per i got into medfords and i got deep into medfords about a year ago i got into watches and i've gone crazy in watches it's dangerous territory my friend I was talking to T1 uh, Gear Reviews the other day. Um, just sold him a knife and some stuff. And he's like, yeah, I want to buy that, but can we wait a week or whatever? Because I, I got to buy this other drone because th I had a drone accident and it destroyed my drone and I had to buy a new drone. And I'm like, I don't even want to know how much a drone is. I don't want to talk about that. I don't want to know nothing about drones. Yeah, yeah. Because that's one thing I could get it. Nope, I don't even want to know. Keep that drone talk to yourself. I don't want to know about it because I could get into that and I, I don't need another thing. So do you have a collector's, would you say you have a collector's soul? I think so. Yeah. I just kind of collect stuff right now. It's just knives and watches. I, I, I was successful and I didn't get into flashlights. Oh, good. Yeah. Flashlights. I still don't get it. I mean, I get it. But it, it, it just doesn't do it for me. It just doesn't. I carry a flashlight all the time. Mm -hmm. I have two on my desks here. The, you know, FW3A, very popular, 50-ish dollars. Um, and then a, I don't even know which one this is, Convoy S something. 
again, $20, $30. Uh, and I've got some Streamlight AAAs, you know, things like that, that I used when I was years ago when I was exercising and jogging and <clears throat> way back in a former life. Because yeah. I would run in the middle of the morning at 3 a.m. before I went to work and type of things. And so I had a flashlight. But yeah, I didn't, I, I stayed away. I got one nice flashlight and I'm good. Well, you know, I can tell you're not into flashlights because you call them flashlights. Flashlights, yeah, guys call them torches. Yeah, yeah. That to me <laughs> sounds a little, a little, a little high, a little highfalutin, a little <laughs> better put my pinky out to, you know, sip my tea. All right, so so uh, 2020 uh, is 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 in the bag. Um, a lot of people would say, thankfully. Um, what were your favorite knives? Like, what were the? And they don't necessarily have to be releases from 2020. But what were you most excited about this past year? You know, uh, for my own self, it was the 8020. I think was one of the top ones that I was able to snag. Um, just a fantastic knife. I loved, I loved Demko stuff. I'd had an AD15. I had a couple of them loaned in. I think Alex loaned me a true AD15, and somebody else loaned me the Cold Steel AD15. Totally night and day difference. Really? I I did a comparison video. There was there was noticeable difference. Oh, well, I know there's a bit of a difference <clears throat> in the mechanism uh, where the lock terminates in the handle. Uh, I know there's a difference there. There's a little bit, and just the feel in the hand, the 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 fit and finish. There there was a noticeable difference. I, I shouldn't act surprised. Of course there is, because uh, he labored over that knife himself and his brother. Yeah, uh, I guess uh, presumably. Uh, at, whereas um, many hands labored over over the eighty the cold steel. You know. Yeah, and not to say that the cold steel is a bad knife, but no, way. it's pretty awesome actually. I didn't like that lock style, that scorpion lock. Mm -hmm. I couldn't. I mean, I could manipulate it and do it, but I couldn't get behind it. I, it wasn't a thing for me. I yeah, was like, yeah, yeah. Didn't compel you. It kind of seems like work to me. <laughs> and right? Dave, it might pinch me. Yeah, and I just, I didn't care for that. This shark lock on this 8020, though, is cool. And I was able to pick this up. So that was exciting. Um, and I got my first Todd Fisher Senior custom knife in 2020, as well as my first Todd Fisher Junior custom knife in 2020 so those are have those uh, do you have those close at hand i have so this is the tj fisher one is the cobra this was his more yeah. semi production one uh and then i had him make one made one of the king kamehameha's as a custom which is in the other room okay. and then the todd senior is the archangel which is something I had lusted after for a long time. That is beautiful. Put that a little bit closer to your camera, Dirk, so we can take a look at that. So it's a, and I don't think I've actually done a video on this one yet. It's carbon fiber inlay, uh, titanium scales, beautiful pocket clip. God, that blade is insane. That it's a beautiful. It's a slight recurve, big belly, like just drop point yeah. recurve with a with a big giant harpoon swedge it is yeah. gorgeous and when it fits in your hand it's just beautiful like it just works and in the pocket oh god it, it's thicker it's you know it's not a small knife yeah but it really does disappear in your pocket so now i need to get one from frank fisher so i could complete my trifecta Oh, oh, that's, uh, is he a grandson? Uh, what is the... So it's Todd Sr. and then Todd Jr. and then Frank, our brothers. Okay. Todd brother. Jr. and Frank are brothers. Mm -hmm. um, and Frank Fisher does the battle and the fury are his two main models. Uh, and the battle is probably my ultimate, ultimate grail. I first saw that with Jim Skelton's video and have lusted after them ever since. How many knives do you have? Like, how, uh, you know, I know that's a tough question unless you sit there and count, but wh where would you put it? I'm just curious. Probably, you know, more than I think I have, but less than you think I have. Huh, that was like when I was a kid and I'd say, Dad, how much money do you make? He'd say, more than a dollar, less than a million, kid. None of your business. <laughs> you know, I think, honestly, I'd have to check my spreadsheet because I'm that guy. Oh, that okay. Spreadsheet. I like that. Okay. Um, I have a spreadsheet. 
um, that tells oftentimes the date I bought it, yes, where I bought it, what I paid for it, and what it is. Okay. okay. Um, and there's a different tab for every maker or manufacturer. And then the miscellaneous, because I may have one or two. Oh, from this my guy. gosh. Yeah. Um, I think realistically, I have in that 60 to 75 range. Okay. Which is a lot less than I would have thought. It's a lot less than Alex. I talk to Alex all the time. He's got like 300 ish. <sighs> he's um, a, he's a, he seems to be an, an endless font of knives, that guy. Yeah, and I've got a box coming from him on Saturday. So he's sending, I think, seven or eight knives. I, 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 I have a box from him. And actually, let me let me show you. My favorite knife in the world ever is, is in the – I have to send back to him right oh, here. Oh, yes. So this is the uh, Brian Nado yep. Sharp by Design Archangel. Arch, arch, arch Nemesis. Arch Nemesis. It's yep. my Archangel. I love this thing, the arch nemesis. And you know what's really cool about that? If you don't know already, I don't want to spoil it for you, but that inlay yeah. glows in the dark. It's radioactive Rafira Noble. Something like that, yes. <laughs> it's crazy. Yeah, yeah, he sent that to me too. And the blade oh, is CNC cut. Like this. you can see the ridges of the Hang milling. On. Let me try and hold this thing still. Yes, you can. It's crazy and it's hard to see on your camera but it's it it's a beautiful knife he loaned that to me too and he's like dude i'm gonna send you something and i know i told you that you could use take apart carry anything i've sent you Jeez. don't do that with this one yeah i i won't even carry this around because i'm afraid somehow this tip is gonna go face first into the into <laughs> right? ceramic floor because that's just my style um Another cool thing about this is it's a folding dagger. There are not too many of those out there. No. There's, there's the um, there's the new one. Um, uh, who designed that? Uh, um, uh, it's going around. Can't remember what it's called, but there's a new folding dagger that looks really, really sweet. Um, damn, I'm sorry. I can't remember who designed it. But also there's the hinderer one, and then there's this. And when you close mm -hmm. it, of course, you have mm -hmm. to remember to use the quilly in there. Otherwise, you'll... Yeah. Because it's legit sharpen on both sides. And and the beautiful thing about this knife is that it does not look like the handle is too bulky and wide. You know, sometimes, Correct. you know, you'll see a dagger uh, type thing um, and the, the handle just looks like a giant block. So I'm doing this with my left hand. <laughs> and, and what's cool about that, too, is that glow in the dark inlay stuff is something that Alex bought. Yeah. And had... Alex is famous for that. He he has a lot of material at his house that he's just waiting to find somebody to make a knife for him out of. Well, so what about you? 2021 is coming up. We can talk production or we can talk irons you have in the fire. But what, what are the knives coming up that you're excited uh, to see, to get, to get in hand? The only one that comes to mind right off the, well, a Frank Fisher battle maybe happens in 2021. I just need to reach out to Frank and see where he's at with books and stuff and start talking. That one's going to be pricey because I figure I'm going to have one shot at getting one from him. Mm -hmm. So I better do Damascus. I better do Mocha. Like it, it better be off the chart because it's going to be my one shot right. in my mind. Yeah. Um, so I don't know if that's going to happen in 2021 or not since I haven't even talked to him yet, but um, there is a company in Germany, Midgard's Messer. Yeah. They made the Viking and I have a Viking here, which is, it, it makes a Medford look small and I didn't bring a Medford out on the table. I'm sorry. Um, no. but, uh, something that you do know, the AD 20 as a size comparison. Let's see if that shows there. Wow. So if I put them kind of tip to tip, you can see there's, it, it, yeah, it makes it look small. So they are coming out with the mini, the little Viking. I think they call it the little Viking. Uh, I already pre-ordered. They're going to ship in June. So I'm excited about that because while this is in my wheelhouse, the big and overbuilt, I'm kind of shifting. Mm -hmm. You know, your tastes change over years, I think. Much like food, right? They say your palate changes every seven years. Huh. Uh, because of your taste buds and all that, you mature. Like every seven years, you should retry food you didn't like. 
before. I think it's shorter in the knife world. It's not seven years because I haven't been collecting seven years and my tastes have already changed. <clears throat> so I'm excited about the little Viking from Midgard Messer. Uh, other than that, I don't know. Just kind of excited to see what comes. Yeah, and just kind of so uh, fixed blades. Do you have any fixed blades? Is this? Uh... I have a couple. Um, you know, I've got the fixed blade kukri. Yes, right. Um, that I just got. I don't know why I bought it because I like sets. Oh, matchy matchy. Like, yeah, I, I'm a sucker for that. <laughs> so there was a fixed blade kukri and a folder. I had to buy them both. And there's a Viking and a mini Viking. I had to buy the mini because mm -hmm. I had to have the set. Yeah. Um, and I've got I've got one Medford fixed blade. Uh, I've got an old Cold Steel Recon Tonto from way back uh, fixed blade. And then I have an SC5. I've got a couple of neck knives, a couple of small little neck knives. This is an extreme ratio. Oh, and I don't remember the number. It's an X01 or something. Um, it's a cool little neck knife. It is small, for sure, no doubt. But uh, in a nice little Kydex sheath that's probably a little bit bigger of a sheath than it needs to be. Yeah, yeah, I see They that. could have kind of done that lacing. You know, they, they could have, I, I think, done it a little bit smaller. Yeah. But it's kind of cool. I don't necessarily carry a neck knife often, but again... I don't carry a lot of things often sometimes, you know, we collect because we collect. Why so, do I see you? Why do I see you with like a, a, a Spartan Harzy dagger or a Spartan um, a Les George dagger? For some reason, I'm seeing you go the fixed blade route. There are so many cool fixed blades. And it's just not practical for me. I wouldn't carry them around. Right, but I mean, in the same in the same spirit as as the giant giant knife, I, who, that I always forget the name of, because I'm, I'm maker with the yeah. light, dude. This is a hand rub satin blade. The light, it just it kills. It's crazy. okay. Okay, and I leave this open here on the table light. because this this is a three eighths inch blade. Oh my gosh, the the frame lock is equally thick. It's a little smaller than three eighths, but this is a beast to close. So once I open it, I kind of just leave it over there for a while open because it's it's hard to close. Well, it's kind of like owning a piece of artwork, that knife. And, it is. And, and in a way, owning a owning a, a dagger, something you know you're not going to carry yep. is also like whole is, is also like that kind of like I'm, I'm, I'm seeing myself go go um, get some more fixed blades coming up here. Okay. I actually do. I'm, I'll say it right here. Uh, I have a Spartan Harzy dagger on the way that I'm. I'm just. Uh, uh, I found a great price from a guy, and mm -hmm. I'm over the moon about it because it's. It is a thing of beauty. I, I don't know if you're familiar with the design, but you look at it, and it has that same sort of effect as uh, as the arch nemesis. I was just holding yes. that perfect symmetry. Something about it. Your eye sees it before mm -hmm. your brain sees it, and it just. Right. Mm, it wants to look at it. And that's what that's what it is for me. Uh, you know, I'm not not out there carrying daggers and thinking I'm going to get in a fight with it or whatever. Doing ops, it's just I like to have them around. I agree. There's something I've always wanted, to, even as a kid, that you know now I should probably rethink and start to look into getting is like a true katana samurai sword, just because I would like one, and I don't want a. Hundred and fifty dollar, you know, flea market catalog made one. Mm -hmm. I don't necessarily want a ten thousand dollar one made in Japan by the guy, but I would like to start to look into that again mm -hmm. and get a set, you know, because I've got the long one and then the shorter one. They yeah. kind of go that the samurai would wear the two. Um, because I'm into that whole Asian kind of culture and design and stuff like that, having gotten tattoos and whatnot and kind of Asian themed. So kind of in keeping with all of that, having a samurai sword or two hanging on the yeah. back wall. Yeah. Curving down like that. I, you know, I could go for that. So that's something that I would, you know, maybe in 2021 kind of start to rethink and look at again. Because oh. it's been years. I just haven't really 
gotten that direction yet. I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hound you about that. And actually, I'll, I'll tell you, to, uh, and check out this guy, Dan Keffler. I don't know if you're familiar with him no. on Instagram, but he, he, he built some insane, insane swords. Uh, I see that near future for you, and I'm going to encourage you down that road because it seems like you're an equal opportunity knife lover and uh, Absolutely. You know, swords and knives too. So. Yep. Yeah, I think a sword or two would be very cool. Always kind of thought maybe, you know, kind of a Conan type sword, samurai type sword, you know, yeah. have a couple of different genres of swords slash fixed blades. I mean, sword and, is just a big fixed blade. And they, they would have to be battle ready. You can't just get a wall hanger because that's like not having anything. No, else. you've got to buy, like for me, I'm going to buy quality stuff. Yeah. Regardless of what I do. I mean, if I'm going to buy and invest in a sword like that, it's not going to be something I find on, you know, Google twenty seven ninety five and free shipping, right? And it's not going to be that. That's just not me. All right, Dirk. So uh, I, I want to do a speed round with you. Um, one answer question. But before we get there, I have one more question for you, and 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 it's kind of your your crystal ball. Like, what do you what do you think the knife world trends are uh, coming in this year, or, or like what do you see the trends? How do you see things changing? What do you think it's going to look like in a year in the knife world? I really think that the big overbuilt knives are not going away, but they're not the main focus anymore. And that's kind of already started, not just for my collection, but just in general. I mean, we got Medford now making small stuff, mm -hmm. like a lot of small stuff. He's not really making new, new models of big stuff. He's making all of his new models are smaller stuff. And I think in general, the knife world is kind of going that smaller route, not, not teeny tiny. I mean, there's a bunch of teeny tiny little fifth pocket type knives, <clears throat> but we're going to see less and less of the big overbuilt folders. I think. I, I, I feel like uh, part and parcel to that is a, is a refinement too. It's like you're getting, you're getting, better steel and and crazy action on very inexpensive knives mm -hmm. that a few years back it, it wasn't uh, wasn't possible i think there's some really great stuff coming out of china and i think the american makers are noticing that and are starting to step up their quality because quite frankly some of the stuff coming out of riyadh it blows away a lot of the american stuff and i've said that before on my channel i have no problem with that if you're buying quality stuff from a quality company in China, I'm all for that. No knockoffs, none of that garbage. Mm -hmm. But the quality on it on a on a Riyadh thing for two three hundred dollars rivals six seven eight hundred dollars stuff here in the U.S. I think, hmm. and I well, think the I, American makers are noticing that and are starting to refine their stuff. I, I think they I, have to. I, I, yeah, and I hope they can make it work uh, and, and be cost effective and be making mm -hmm. things that are just as, uh, and, and, and presenting us with option paralysis the way China is. There's so many great options. That well, you, you had mentioned Tucson having so many different models. You could legit collect one maker, Tucson, and have every different variety type of knife you want because they've got everything. They don't have the huge overbuilt folders necessarily, but any other style, Persian style, Tontos, you know, you name it, they've got a style and you could collect all of your knives from one company if you chose to do it that way. Yeah. It'd kind of be a fun exercise, I think. And with Tucson, you wouldn't go broke doing it. Yeah. You would just go crazy trying to find the models you want because they're exactly because so they do the ZT thing and they just call them all by numbers. <laughs> oh, God. That's annoying, but that's another story. All I'm right, are, are you ready for a speed round, sir? Shoot, these are these are one word answers, and uh, and and I might, uh, yeah, okay, there we go. All right, fixed or folder? Folder. Flipper or thumb stud? Flipper. Washers or bearings? Don't care. Washers or bearings? Bearings. Okay, now you care. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Tip up or tip down? Always tip up. Tanto or Bowie? Tanto. Hollow ground or flat ground? Hollow. 
Full size or small? Full size. Gentleman's knife or tacti- tactical knife? Tactical. Automatic or bally song? Automatic. ZT or Riyadh? Riyadh. Benchmade or Hogue? Benchmade. Uh, M390 or 20CV? M390 because I just I, <laughs> what's the I don't care. <laughs> I, 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 I I don't care about steel one bit, one bit honestly. Yeah, I, I hear you. Okay, Tucson or Kubi? Oh, Kubi because of the price. Okay, uh, milled titanium or spring clip? Oh, titanium. Carbon fiber or micarta? Carbon fiber. I knew it. Every day. Twice <laughs> on Sundays. <laughs> Finger choil or no choil? No choil. Form or function? Form. Frank Fisher or Todd Fisher? Just kidding. You don't have to oh. answer that. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Okay. Your desert island knife. The very, The very one knife that you would say... Uh, to hold on to for the rest of your life if you had to get rid of all else? That is such a hard question. Um, gosh, man. There's, <laughs> there's, there's, I can't even answer that. That's And we're not even talking survival on a desert island. We're just talking yeah, your no, life I, continues, but there's only one knife in there. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't know. I mean... Well, the good news is you won't be held to it. So, uh, so, so, so give me an estimation. Man. Yeah, there's so many factors that go into a one knife. And we have this conversation with watches too. If you could only have one watch, right? We don't know. Um just just looking around at my table here right now, I would go with the 80-20. Ah, that is a very, very sensible choice, sir. Sensible, given given what I know must be around you right now at the moment. Yeah, uh, I mean, you know, yeah, it's great to have the higher-end customs and things like that. But, you know, if you were going to knock it down to just one that you would carry, you would use, you know, it was your one go-to to... to do cardboard to do your steak at dinner when they give you a crappy steak knife because god that always happens it's always crappy steak knife. um you know yeah your 80 20 i think is really kind of one of my all-around knives uh, a lot of people have said that this year and uh so people need to check that out they also need to check you out tell people how to find you on youtube and instagram dirk warning uh, it's like i came up with like such a catchy name because quite frankly I couldn't think of a better name on YouTube. I, I, we spent a couple of times, a couple of days with a few friends coming up with names and we really couldn't come up with anything. So I said, screw it. It worked for Jim. It worked for Nick. I'll just use my name. Yeah. And on Instagram, it's Dirk Warning YouTube. Yep. Underscore YouTube. Oh, just to oh, kind of differentiate it, I guess. I don't know. I may take the YouTube thing off at some point. Uh, I play with the Instagram thing back and forth. So I'm not sure. Well, Dirk, thanks for coming on the podcast and thanks for opening up and letting us know about your collection and, and your philosophy of collecting. It's uh, It's been good to get the official word from you. We've we've chatted on Thursday Night Knives, but, yep. but now I have a record. Now I have a record of who I'm dealing with. Oh, boy. So, thanks. No, for thank you. I greatly appreciate the time. Oh, my pleasure. My pleasure. Take care, sir. Great. Thank you. Visit The Knife Junkie at thenifejunkie.com to catch all of our podcast episodes, videos, photos, and more. So there he goes, Dirk Warning. Definitely check him out on YouTube. His uh, his, uh, channel is excellent. His reviews are excellent. And his, uh, uh, what do you call it? The the selection of knives he has up is wide. And uh, yeah, check him out. He's a great guy. All right, that was Dirk Werning, and for Jim working his magic behind the switcher, I'm Bob DeMarco saying uh, we'll see you here next week, and don't take dull for an answer. Thanks for listening to the Knife Junkie Podcast. If you enjoyed the show, please rate and review at reviewthepodcast.com. 
For show notes for today's episode, additional resources, and to listen to past episodes, visit our website, theknifejunkie.com. You can also watch our latest videos on YouTube at theknifejunkie.com slash YouTube. Check out some great knife photos on theknifejunkie.com slash Instagram, and join our Facebook group at theknifejunkie.com slash Facebook. And if you have a question or comment, email them to bob at theknifejunkie.com or call our 24-7 listener line at 724-466-4487, and you may hear your comment or question answered on an upcoming episode of the Knife Junkie Podcast. Thank you.